Hello everyone. I am Dr. Zishan Anwar. Currently, I am working as head of department at University of Okada in Pakistan. I have more than 15 years of working experience in different renowned public sector and private universities of Pakistan like Comsets University, University of Lahore, University of Sialkot, University of Central Punjab, and currently I am working as HOD at University of Okada. I am very pleased that the International Conference on Economic Management and Green Development has invited me as a key uh, as a committee member, and uh, I am delivering us delivering my speech. Uh, let me share my slides uh, with you, uh, which uh, I am going to talk about. So, uh, the topic of my presentation is corporate governance, cost of capital and from profitability, evidence from Asian countries. Uh, it is a research topic uh, which we have recently completed. Uh, first of all, uh, these are the contents that, uh, which we would discuss uh, in this presentation. Uh, the first one is introduction of the study, then research methods, uh, then we would talk about empirical results and findings, and finally, we would discuss about the conclusion of the study. So first of all, introduction related to corporate governance, why corporate governance is important, and why we need the corporate governance amendments, new rules and regulations for the better performance of the companies. So the changes in corporate governance practices are mostly the reaction to exogenous factors. And there are uh, some high profile corporate failures and scandals, for example, Enron, Worldcom, Tyco, British and Commonwealth, etc. There are too many examples uh, which stimulated the interest of the academician and the practitioner for managing the situation through concentrating on the governance systems all around the globe because the academician and practitioners believe that governance is a system which can uh, build some wall against these kind of corporate failures. Uh, so the need for more transparency and accountability in managing and controlling the organizations play an important role in firm performance. Therefore, uh, the concerned authorities have developed several rules, regulations, and laws, and they have approved in different countries for controlling the governance practices. So uh, this study empirically examines the relationship of governance practices with the cost of capital by utilizing the data from top multinational firms in Asian countries, as empirical studies regarding governance practices are comparatively lesser for Asian countries. So that's why this study is very important because it concentrated on the giant multinationals of the Asian countries, which has far more capitalization and their impact is very strong on the economy, on the world economy as well. So the theoretical model of this study is based on agency theory and stewardship theory, and it attempts to solve the problems highlighted by these theories by utilizing the variables associated with governance practices and measure their impact on cost of capital. As far as motivation of this study is related, there are several gaps in existing literature which offer strong motivation to conduct this research as findings of this study will bridge these gaps in empirical literature. So this research investigates whether quality of governance practices could result in a lower cost of debt, equity, weighted average cost of capital, and it can improve the firm performance by utilizing the panel data of top multinational firms in 24 Asian countries. And this data would cover a time span of from year 2011 to year 2020. So uh, then now let's talk about objectives of this study, uh, which have been achieved through research mechanism. 
So the first objective is to determine whether good corporate governance practices result in lowering the cost of equity. The second objective is whether corporate governance practices results in lower cost of debt. The third objective is to examine whether corporate governance practices result in lowering the weighted average cost of capital. Then the fourth objective and uh, fifth objective are related to the firm profitability. So the fourth objective is whether good corporate governance practices results in higher sales growth. And the last objective is whether better governance practices results in higher return on assets. Uh, this section presents the research methods related to this study and the first section in research method is the conceptual framework. Uh, as we can see in this diagram, on the left hand side, uh, we have mentioned the independent variables and on the right hand side, we have mentioned the uh, dependent variables. When we look at the independent variables, there are six variables related to corporate governance practices, namely board independence, ownership concentration, audit committee independence, quality of corporate governance, board size, and CEO duality. Then there are five control variables, namely firm leverage, firm size, firm systematic risk, sales growth, and return on assets. In these ind uh, independent variables, the fourth variable, which is quality of corporate governance, it has been measured through an index uh, by incorporating the different corporate governance characteristics, and it uh, represents the overall performance uh, of the corporation related to corporate governance. Then uh, the dependent variables related to cost, cost of capital are three, cost of equity, cost of debt, and weighted average cost of capital. Then uh, we are having some discussion regarding data and selection of sample for this study. So briefly describing the sample of this research is selected from 762 multinational firms in 24 Asian countries, which have been listed in the world's largest public companies by the Forbes Global 2000. So basically every year Forbes Global 2000 report the top 2000 multinationals of the world. So uh, in these top 2000 multinationals of the world, there are 762 multinational firms which are related to the Asian countries in 24 different uh, countries. So uh, there are 762 Asian multinational firms listed in Forbes Global 2000. Out of these 762 firms, 486 firms are related to the non-financial sector and 276 firms are related to the financial sector. So as the purpose of this study is to examine the performance and cost of capital with uh, corporate governance for the non-financial sector, Therefore, the final sample consists of 363 non-financial multinational companies, which represents 75% of the sample. And it has been included in the data set of this research as representatives of larger multinational companies. So we have um, done our best to include the maximum data set which is available so that to have better representation and get uh, more generalized results. Then uh, some explanation of the variables, how these variables have been measured, cost of equity, cost of debt, weighted average cost of capital, then there is discussion and uh, some highlights of the uh, calculation of the independent variables as well. So based on the empirical literature, the best possible methods have been adopted for the calculation and measurement of all the dependent and independent variables. Then uh, there are five regression models uh, which have been tested in this study through examining the data through uh, Stata software. So uh, the first model, uh, the first three models are related to uh, cost of capital, whereas the last two models are related to from profitability. So we can see that the first model, we took cost of equity as a dependent variable and there are independent variables related to the corporate governance as well as some control variables like uh, board size, ownership concentration, audit committee independence, quality of corporate governance, then uh, uh, 
again board size uh, along with board structure then uh, ceo duality leverage of the firm is control variable size of the firm is control variable return on assets sales growth and volatility of the company all of these are the control variables then in model 2 uh, the independent variables remain the same, whereas cost uh, dependent variables was changed and we took the second cost of capital measurement, that is cost of debt as a dependent variable. In model three, we took uh, weighted average cost of capital as a dependent variable. In model four, we took sales growth, which represents the firm profitability as a dependent variable. And in model five, we took return on asset as firm profitability measurement uh, as a dependent variable. Then uh, for the measurement of results uh, and analysis of the data, we uh, utilized uh, different techniques uh, as suggested by the literature. First of all, we applied the pooled OLS model. Then we applied Hausman test to check whether uh, fixed effect or random effect model would be applicable. Then we applied heterogeneity uh, uh, checks and uh, uh, endogenic, endogeneity checks and heteroscedasticity checks and as the data was uh, gathered uh, from different countries so these problems were existent in our data so therefore we applied panel practice standard error model and uh, finally due to endogeneity issue due to heteroscedasticity issue serial correlation we applied two stage least square regression model which is assumed to be one of the best uh, models uh, for uh, the more accurate results in pro uh, if the problems which we just uh, discussed are present uh, present in our data. Then uh, the third section of this study that is empirical results and findings. So uh, this diagram, this table represents results related to cost of capital measures, which are three, cost of equity, cost of debt, and weighted average cost of capital uh, along with the, the independent variables. So uh, if we just look at the first in the, uh, dependent variable cost of equity, we can see that board structure has positive and significant impact on cost of equity, whereas the same variable has negative and significant impact on cost of debt and weighted average cost of capital. If we see about the ownership concentration variable, the ownership concentration variable has positive and significant impact on all of the these three dependent variables, which means that if ownership concentration would increase, it would uh, increase the cost of capital for the firm. Whereas when we see the first variable board structure, if there is increase in board structure, uh, then uh, cost of debt and weighted average cost of capital would decrease. Then audit committee independence has positive, uh, has negative and significant impact on cost of equity and cost of debt, which means if audit committee independence would be better in a multinational company, it would result in a lower cost of capital. Then, uh, the index, uh, governance index variable, that is quality of corporate governance, it has significant and negative impact on cost of equity and weighted average cost of capital. So we can see that uh, better governance practices would result in lowering the cost of capital for the multinational firm. And then there are uh, the results related to the independent uh, control variables as well. Some of the variables have positive impact, some of the variables have negative impact. Then uh, the second part of the results, uh, these are the results related to the relationship between corporate governance and firm's profitability. So uh, as we have two measures uh, for representing the profitability of the organization, uh, namely sales growth and return on assets, so both of these results have been presented over here. And we can see that uh, board structure has positive and significant impact on both of the profitability measures. It means if board structure would improved by the multinational organization, it, it has a better performance, then the sales growth and return on assets would also increase for those multinationals. 
when we see about the ownership concentration it has positive and significant impact on sales growth uh, which means that better ownership concentration or more ownership concentration would result in better or improved sales growth for those companies then audit committee independence again it has positive and significant impact it means uh, uh, more audit committee independence would result in higher profitability for the company and the uh, variable of quality of corporate governance overall measure it has in significant impact with sales growth whereas there are results related to the other uh, control variables namely leverage size volatility return on assets sales growth related to the dependent variable so overall uh, if we just sum up these results we can see that majority of the corporate governance variables they have significant and negative relationship uh, with a uh, cost of capital for the multinational firms which means that if multinational companies can improve their governance practices they would be able to decrease their cost of capital because why it would be happening because in uh, investors would have more trust on those companies which are having better governance practices because uh, they foresee or forecast that these better governance practices would be beneficial for the shareholders it would be beneficial even for the debt holders as well because because of more governance uh, uh, improved governance structure and more transparency and accountability the uh, managers won't be able to uh, move the practice according to their own interest rather they would be uh, you can say forced to uh, have those policies which would be in the better interest of the shareholders and uh, bondholders debt holders etc so uh, then the second part of the results also depict that better governance practices would result in improved profitability as well it means even the customers uh, are also focusing on governance mechanisms or in, uh, if the firms are having better governance structures better mechanism then uh, because of that their cost of capital is decreasing and as the cost of capital is decreasing their expenses are decreasing overall their profitability increase and it is being depicted by the uh, results of these companies then finally the uh, we are moving towards conclusion of this study uh, this study uh, is determined to examine the relationship of governance practices with cost of equity cost of debt weighted average cost of capital sales growth and return on assets so there are obvious indications that governance practices do influence the cost of capital and corporate profitability so therefore implementation of governance practices will assist the firms in lowering the cost of capital and increasing the value and profitability of the organization so that's what we have just discussed that if uh, this study is concluding that if the multinational companies would be able to improve their governance systems it would result in lowering their cost of capital and it would also result in improving their firm profitability so accordingly it would result in positive contribution in gdp growth of asian countries and if these multinationals would grow they have uh, more profitability definitely the economies of these countries would also grow because uh, these giant multinationals have significant impact on the uh, economies and GDPs of their own countries as well as economic conditions of the world economy as well. So thus it is extremely important for the companies to strengthen their corporate governance structures to obtain equity and debt financing at a lesser cost and consequent to attain higher level of profitability. So that's what uh, would be the benefit for these organizations that due to better governance system, they would be able to get debt financing and equity financing at a lower cost and it would ultimately would result in a better performance uh, higher profitability for those organizations so uh, that's all uh, from my side uh, for today's presentation and i am very much thankful and feeling happy 
to the organizers, uh, organizers of International Conference on Economic Management and Green Development that they have given me a, this a chance to uh, deliver my speech for this esteemed, uh, esteemed conference. Thank you very much, uh, guys. That's all from my side.